Felios was broken. What is actually happening? What the f is that? No matter how much Riot nerfed him, it was never enough. Every single patch has been about a Filios nerf. He has not gotten a single buff since he got released, and he's still way fucking up there. And for almost a year, he terrorized League of Legends. Oh yeah, right. with his Q, so, marked him me. up. There's the ultimate. Okay. Gonna land a few extras, and that's what happens now, with explain, Calibrum. Explain to me what just happened. Now. I don't know. I didn't code this champion, but he's busted. Aphelios. For the last year, this champion has terrorized Pro League of Legends, leaving behind a trail of plays that left everyone watching thinking the same thing. What the hell did I just see? Oh my god! Aphelios is so insane! What the f For most of the 2020 season, Aphelios has been the premier AD carry, with a kit so complicated that guys like Doublelift had to give his team a TED talk just to explain how he works. Every time you type in an ability, so this hits nine times, you get a stack. His kit was insane. It was super unique, unlike anything that had ever been in League before. He had five different guns he could switch between, with different abilities attached to each gun, and his ult changed depending on which gun you had equipped. He didn't level up abilities either. He earned skill points, which he could put into attack speed, attack damage, or armor penetration. Even his UI was completely different from every other champion. Aphelios was the most unique original champion that League of Legends had ever seen, but as fans read his champion primer, they started to get worried. Over the last couple of years, Riot has made more and more champion designs that scream broken, and make older champion designs look like outdated relics. Between the super tank Orn who gave his team thousands of gold in stats, or Yumi's super heal, or Zoe picking up 50 flashes a game, players were worried that Aphelios was going to be another broken champion that made them want to uninstall the game. And their worst nightmare came true. It's one free kill waiting for me, Mr. Jin. <laughs> Just six days after he was released, Riot had to hotfix Aphelios, nerfing both his Calibrum, the sniper rifle that let him mark enemies and hit them from anywhere on the map, and his ultimate, Moonlight Vigil, the one that was letting him one-shot entire teams. Still, some hope that Aphelios wasn't really broken. It was just that people in solo queue didn't know how to deal with him. They figured, surely, that pro players in leagues like the LPL and the LEC would figure him out and reveal all of his flaws. Spoiler. They didn't. There's the shockwave coming in, but it's Inferno from FBI! On him the whole time, and he's still able to unleash the fire onto Dignitar. Aphelios took over pro play. Even though he was nerfed, Aphelios could still do it all. He had Caitlyn-style range with Calibrum, Lifesteal with Severum, hard CC with Gravitum, monstrous AoE damage with Infernum, and crazy attack speed with Crescendum. Currently has Caitlyn enabled. Yep. Caitlyn's a pretty cool champ. Cogmaw switches over to, now over to Varus, with the purple gun back to Caitlyn. Back to Varus, manages to land a three-man. Varus alt switches over to Jinx for the AoE damage, and then back over to Varus for oh, the control. The ball, back the to Jinx. Pretty impressive. I know my champion. He's just so many champions. <laughs> With all these tools, Aphelios created unbelievable moments in pro play. Viewers, casters, and analysts were all left thinking the same thing. 200 years. I mean, you even see Fly going in there just as punching back. And then we're all reintroduced <laughs> to Mr. 200 years. Oh my. It's gonna really come down to a Miracle Kiana Ultimate Flawless. Doesn't even probably think he can go for the steal, but he might! Aphelios! How many years? 200 Years was a meme that was born on Twitter when a writer ran their mouth a little bit when talking about balancing Wukong. Now, that comment was made on January 8th, just a few weeks after Aphelios was released and was one-shotting entire teams. So Twitch streamer Forrest Within created a video about how 200 years of collective professional game design experience created a monster. And when pro play resumed, casters and pundits couldn't stop saying 200 years. The meme stuck because Kind of ironically, you needed at least two centuries of watching Aphelios in action to understand anything this champion was doing. And Lahans will be the first one to go down, but Mystic oh. grabs that kill as Vista on the back line, but he's now sort of one versus four. Off on the other front, they turn onto the three, the flash forward, Vista is point blank range with the 
Close range weaponry, <laughs> my god! Is it difficult to cast a Felios? Oh, yeah. And with his Q, so marked him up. There's the ultimate. Okay. Gonna land a few extras, and that's what happens now with explain, Calibrum. Explain to me what just happened now. He marked them, and then because they're marked, for some reason you can hit them across the other side of the map. I don't know. I didn't code this champion, but he's busted. Sure, people were just trying to be funny, but Release of Felios had some real clarity issues. For example, it was really difficult to know what gun he had in his main or his offhand and when he was switching those guns. From a viewer and opponent's perspective, it was impossible to understand what was going on. I want to take this moment um, to say that I am the uh, I'm the LCK color caster, and I will uh, be casting LCK tomorrow. And um, I have no fucking idea what that champion does. Okay, I've probably played against him about a hundred times. I have no fucking clue what I'm looking at. I don't know what's coming next. I'm. Just, I mean, you just approach him and you're guessing. To their credit, Riot were not ignoring the problem, but because Aphelios had so many moving parts, he was pretty tricky to balance. At least in solo queue, this champion doesn't even have a very good win rate, and that's that's like um, something that I think makes it more complicated to balance, right? And then they have to, the designers basically have to decide, like, okay, do we just like not like what this champion is doing for the game? And if you don't like what the champion is doing for the game and you think that it's unhealthy or unfun or whatever, you can pretty much just kneecap it and then it's like, okay, well now no one's gonna play Aphelios. So instead of just nuking Aphelios in one go, Riot decided to hand him small to medium nerfs patch after patch until they found his happy middle ground. And by the end of spring, that strategy was looking to have worked. But then came summer. Enter Death's Dance. Well, we'll see whether this fight is gonna change anything as Destiny will bring Fly in there as Spirit with his, uh... Ultimate running keeps himself alive, but that Empress Divide was absolutely fantastic. It's nothing in comparison to Mystic with his Quadra kill, though. Is it going to be back-to-back -back Pentas against Sandbox in the first game? It is! In patch 10.6, the item Death's Dance receives a little bit of a rework. It lost 30 damage in exchange for 30 armor and magic resist. This was intended to help out top laners, but as any League fan knows, Riot's balance changes rarely go as intended. Inex is left alone and will be cut down eventually. Let's see how much damage you can put out. Yeah, just wait till Hansama lands one Q and it's all over. Yeah, definitely. Hansama. Wait, wait! That's a lot of damage. It's not done yet. I saw I wrote to death warrant, but he's still alive. Inex is looking to get a second. He gets a double kill. The life steal. The death dodge. What is happening? What? Inex is turning around to Hansama. Here comes Nukes. That is incredible. Inex, I was convinced you were done. <laughs> I stopped shout casting. Uh, Death Dance. 200 years. Molten Edge. After just a few short months of reprieve, people were back to shouting 200 years, and Riot had to start swinging the nerf bat again. But this time, some people disagreed. Some felt that Aphelios wasn't broken. It was just that teams actually weren't dealing with him correctly. If you have any complaints about Aphelios, it should not be how the champion is balanced. If it's that you don't understand Aphelios, that's fine. Because this shit is really hard to understand. If you're a pro player, that excuse doesn't count. It's your job to play this game. You need to read. Many analysts and pundits like LS believe that Aphelios wasn't broken. It was just that teams kept picking melee compositions into him, which Aphelios hard countered. I'm one of the big dissenters that uh, Aphelios is not imbalanced. Um, and I think that we, you see that a lot in games where Aphelios players like struggle to do anything. Um, and if like you were to talk to the Aphelios player, they would literally say like, I just can't play the game or I can't deal damage. But rather than leave Aphelios as he was, Riot continued to nerf him. And after his ninth consecutive series of nerfs, Aphelios finally fell out of the top tier AD carry rotation. End of the day, Aphelios has obviously disappeared from pro play for the most part. He is about Varus tier in solo queue win rate. Like, this champ is actually just a dog champ. While he may have been broken on his release, Aphelios is still one of the coolest champions in the game. Riot took a real risk, designing something unlike anything they'd ever made before. But balancing issues have distorted players' views of him forever. He will forever be associated with being broken. And he's not alone. Riot keeps releasing new champions with experimental kits. They can't design the same kind of characters forever after all. But they run the risk of creating another Aphelios. And as these kits become more complicated and unique, they have to ask, is experimentation worth breaking their game in half? Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.